Hi. Okay. Um, I made these and these the other day, and there's been a lot of questions. So this one requires soldering of this bezel wire on the outside and on the inside and um, setting the stones. These ear wires I purchased from Rio, they were on clearance. These stones were already set in them. Um, I think they were around, I don't know, $8 on clearance, something like that. The bezel wire comes like this and you have to bend it and then solder the ends and whatnot. But if you're not up to that, I think this gives a similar feel and it's using the crystal rivets and there's no soldering required. But the point of this is to try to use what you have on hand and not go crazy trying to find things. These I happen to have the hole on them is about two millimeters. You actually need it to be a little bit wider, so you would have to drill out the center if you wanted to use something like this. Got them off of eBay a long time ago. Um, the crystal rivet, depending upon the size you're gonna use, I didn't even make it big enough for that one. Um, the smaller ones, ooh, is that the not the one? Oh yeah, it is the one I drilled. Okay, it fits in there. Um, because I drilled it. So uh, another option, I went through my husband's drawer and found some stainless steel washers. I think that would look really cute. I think that would be adorable. Um, I also punched out a little copper circle that I used my Peppy Dust Cutter to punch out. I used for this one, um, I'm not sure what size. I think it was 3 eighths. Um, but I think that looks pretty too. And if you wanted a little more detail and you stamp, you could easily stamp little circles or flowers or whatever you wanted around there, or just lines. On these, um, I wanted a little something on the edge, so I just took uh, my hammer and came up onto my anvil, and I just went around the edge like this, turning it. going too fast, so you're not, I'm not really getting the same detail I got before. But you spend as much time as you want on that. There you go. You can see a little bit of it now. On the edge here, you can see a little bit of the detail. So, uh, but again, you could stamp that if you wanted to. So I used um, spoon bowls that I had rolled out um, on the rolling mill and I had textured with the cupcake wrappers. I have another video that showed you how to do that. I like for my earrings, I like it to be pretty thin. This is somewhere between 22 and 24 gauge. Um, it's a little tight on 24, but it's loose on 22. And um, if you're going to be using a drill press to make your center holes, um, I suggest you drill it before you punch it. Um, and the reason for that is it's a lot easier to hold a spoon bowl like this than it is to try to hold a little circle like this when you're trying to use the drill press. There is another alternative. If you don't have a drill press or you don't want to use a drill press, um, there's this hole puncher. Let me take it out of here so you can see it. This is what it is. It has different size um, pieces that you can put in here and here to do different holes. And I went through and I played with it. I put it in the vise because it's easier for me to press. I can just hit the handle 
um, and it's easier for me to do. Um, let me just show you on a piece of scrap. So you put it in, line it up. Can you get down a little lower so they can see? So you can line up, you could make a mark where you wanted your hole to be and line it up and then back up. And then I just go like that to actually do it because otherwise it hurts my hand. So this one, um, makes a hole that fits the, this is the six millimeter uh, crystal rivet. So this is an eighth inch hole that I have in here right now. It's the eighth inch punch. Um, to, I like them to sit down lower um, in the finished product. So the copper, I made a slightly larger hole because I'm gonna use that on top and then the rivet will sit down into it a little bit. So it sits, it sits lower, Oops, sorry guys, um, then if you just had it on this, the problem with that I found with it when it sits high like this is that, Michael, I'm trying to move away so that it focuses, okay. When it sits high like that, it's easy to catch hair on the edge. And for an earring, I don't I really don't want that. I don't want it on anything, but especially not on an earring. So what I went ahead and, okay, let's go back to this. I'm gonna show you on the drill press, if you're gonna drill out the center hole, how you would go about doing that. And then um, you'll have options. So first you want to make a center divot where you're gonna where you want your drill to sit so that it doesn't skitter on you when you start it up. Then I want this design to be fairly centered. It's not gonna, it's not perfectly round because the mill stretches things when you put it through, depending upon how much pressure you put on it. And since this was just done with a cupcake wrapper, the paper does get stretched a little bit if you go for a deep design or deep impression. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide it in upside down and you always need another piece of metal of the equal thickness on the other side. I'm gonna put a little bit of tension on it. And then I'm gonna flip it over, back off the tension, and I can center my design in that hole as best I can. Mm. I think that's pretty good. Another option that I have since I've already done my hole, my center hole, is Pepe. When you buy a Pepe disc cutter, it comes with centering dies. So I can take that and I can put that in and it'll automatically push that hole to the center of that die. Oops. I'm trying not to lose all my tools. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my one inch disc cutter, put some lube on it. You wanna do that to keep them from getting ruined before every cut. I'm taking a brass hammer. This one happens to be three pounds, it's a little heavy. Probably a few pounds would be easier on your wrist. Okay. There we go. Now, if I was gonna use the drill press to do the other hole to hang it from, I would have done that before 
um, cutting the circle because again, it'll be easier and safer to do that. But um, I'm gonna use the Mighty Punch. But for that, I want a smaller, this is how you change them. Um, I'm gonna, you unscrew the bottom one and screw in. This is a one and a half inch, which doesn't come with the kit, but can be purchased off of eBay. Um, that's where I got my eBay, or I think Amazon sometimes has them. And then this is how you change the top part. Pull that out. Put those aside. There's the one and a half inch. I mean, I'm sorry, one and a half millimeter, excuse me. You need it to not drop down all the way when you're putting it in because it fits in there. There you go. And then you gotta line these guys up again. I normally just keep this set up with the one and a half because that's what I like to use for most of the holes for things I'm gonna hang, like ear, ear wires or for a jump ring. I like the one and a half. So I usually just leave this set up like that. But if you're gonna make a bunch of these, you could easily, you know, go through your different steps and set it up for each one of them. So now I'm gonna take this and put it in, line up my hole to where I want it to be. And again, I'm just gonna pound it. Okay, so um, I'm going to use for this one, I'm going to use copper and I'm going to use a purple ribbit and here's my little back. There we go. I snapped it on just to get it connected. Now we're going to move over here to the bender. And th there's a bunch of different ways that you can set these rivets, but this is the way I prefer. Uh, I don't need this in there. Just take that out. I take an old block. This is, um, you get bender blocks. This is an older one that I have from an older version. And you want it to, you want it to stand up straight. I'm using the flat part of the block. You want it to stand up straight so that when you apply the pressure, um, it, let's see if I go like that. Can you see that, Michael? Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's lined up fair, eh, it's gotten a little kind of wonky there. Okay, so I'm gonna lift this side to just keep it steady and straight until I start applying the pressure. Stop and turn it, because I am getting wonky. So I'm trying to do this from the side so you guys can see it. You do have to be careful to not put too much pressure. You don't want to crack your crystal rivet. But um, I found that these suckers are, are actually pretty Pretty sturdy. Okay, so there you go. Your rivet is set. Could probably use another press, but you can see that it's flattening out on the back. Your rivet's set, it's not going anywhere, and you've now held those two pieces together. Um, so now I would do the same thing with a smaller piece for the top. 
and that one I would punch. Um, I did a center hole already. Um, but again, if you're drilling, you want to do it while it's this size. And even if I'm not drill, well, it's a lot easier if you do your holes before you have a tiny piece to work with. But it's also tricky because I was trying to keep it as small as possible. So I can use this as a gauge and I can figure out, you know, where the other holes could be. But it's going to be a little bit of a guessing game. Um, let's see. Let's see. I'm going to come over. I'm going to use this if I can. Oops. Now we'll see. I know that I really wanted to have a um, three eighths. Well, let's see what's going to happen when I put it in the three eighths hole. I think we're going to be okay. So if you can show down in there. Did we able to get in there? So when I punch that, I'll have both my holes and I can set another crystal rivet and I'll have the two holes that I need to hang it from. So that's, that's it really, guys. Um, I hope that helps you. You could have used anything you wanted for the center. Um, you could cut out a little star if you wanted, that would look cute. And then put a hole in the center of that. These I found, I couldn't get these to work. They're just too thin. Um, these are pieces of um, silver plated trays and that would work fine as well. And I also found, if anybody uses these sanding discs on your Dremel, um, I found that that little brass centerpiece might work. It's a square hole, but I think it might work. So let's try that real quick before I let you guys go. This one's a little bit smaller. And I use the smaller rivet for this. This is the four millimeter rivet. If you're using drill bits, you need a 764 hole, or um, so use that bit. Um, for the six millimeter, you need a, a one eighth. So those are your options. gold accent or brass accent on it and I think that's cute too so I hope this is um, giving you ideas and ways that you could um, take a design and make it your own so have fun guys I hope it helps <laughs>